One of the biggest barriers, I believe, in living for Christ, once you come to know him as Savior and Lord, is how you perceive yourself. That image can either be God-honoring or it can be dishonoring to God. One of, the, uh, one of the problems we often face is we do not perceive ourselves in a healthy way. Now, I don't like to talk about a, a good self-image or a bad self-image. What I want to talk about is a healthy biblical self-image. How can we see ourselves in a healthy way that is based upon the very Word of God? First, let's go to Romans 12, verse 3. And Paul writes this, Do not think more highly of yourself than you ought to think. You say, well then, how should I think about myself? Paul answers it right there in verse 3 when he says this, do not think more highly of yourself than you ought to think, but to think according to sound judgment. The truest thing about you is what God says about you. Not your feelings, not your emotions, not your five senses, not what people on television images you see in posters tell about you. The truest thing about you is what God says about you. And how do I know what God says about me? In the Bible. Now the question is, what does the Word of God say about you and me? The overall thing it says is this. You are special. You say, well, Josh, I don't feel special. Well, I don't care how you feel. You see, your feelings can deceive you, but the Bible won't. And the Bible says you are special. You say, well... How am I special? Well, one, you are special because God gave you something he never gave another part of creation. You say, what do you mean? The Bible says that we were created in the image of God. It says, let us make man in our image. You and I have the image of God. Now, what is the image of God? I really believe the image of God is that ability to will, to think, to love, to create, to make moral decisions. The image of God is what God placed within us to be able to relate to him as a personal God in a personal way. You are special because you were created in his image. And then you are special because you are loved. You say, boy, a lot of times, Josh, I sure don't feel loved. It doesn't matter how you feel. The Word of God says you are loved. Now let me show you several aspects of God's love for you. First of all, it is sacrificial. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Second, God's love takes the initiative. In Jeremiah 31, the Word of God says this, I have loved you with an everlasting love. With tender kindness, I have drawn you. He doesn't wait around for us to respond to him. He took the initiative in love and sent his son as a sacrifice on the cross. And then God's love for you is extensive. It is ex it's huge. It's big. It's everlasting. Let me show you how great it is. Most people don't realize just how much God the Son and God the Father loves them. In chapter 15 of the Gospel of John, verse 9, notice what it says. Just as the Father has loved me, I love you. Abide in my love. Wow! Did you get that? Jesus the Son is saying, that just as much as the Father loves me, I love you. Then God's love is knowledgeable. In Psalm 139, verses 1 to 10, 11, 12, God says, it doesn't matter where you go, I know where you are. And my, I love you, I know every mo movement you make. Whether you go lie down or standing up or what, I know you. God 
knows every aspect of our lives, and yet he still loves us. He knows you, and he loves you.